Madewa has been running most of her life. It seems to happen to her regularly. She and the kids just get settled back into their mud house near the town of Lavona in eastern Congo. And then all hell breaks loose. Each time she does the same thing. She grabs the kids and runs. They run through the banana grove and down the hill. They don't know where they're going. It's just away from the gunshots. At 44 years old, and after having had 13 kids, Madera should be enjoying her life, not running to save it. She doesn't know where these people who chase her come from, and she doesn't really care. She just knows that these men and their guns and their stealing ruin her life. They've chased her from her home ten times now, and she's tired of it. These men are from one of the many armed groups in Congo that harass and force hundreds of thousands of Congolese to flee their homes every year. Then they pick their houses clean. People like Maderwa come back to nothing. As if her life wasn't hard enough already, her husband, Tamagali, is sick. She doesn't want to lose him. She's already lost three children. He braids dried banana leaves into ropes and sells them for 10 cents a piece. If he's lucky, he might make a dollar on a good day. Maderwa doesn't have much to begin with. That shirt she's wearing, someone gave it to her. She hasn't owned a pair of shoes in a year. Other things, like food and clothes for the kids, are more important to her. Life has toughened Maderwa, and she's not going to let it get the best of her. She finds her happiness where she can, in spending time with her kids, keeping the family together, and knowing that tomorrow might be a better day. In this case it was. CRS's partners, UNICEF and the Italian organization AVSI, decided to put on a kind of fair to help people like Maderwa. UNICEF funded the fair. They told her she'd get things called vouchers, and she could use them to buy things she needed. She'd never heard of vouchers before, but if they would help her family, she'd give them a try. There were hundreds of people waiting when she arrived, people who had been displaced just like her, and there was so much stuff to choose from. The roofing, the new t-shirts of Obama, and that brand new African print material would be perfect for a new dress. Madero was going to have a hard time deciding what to buy. The scene reminded me of a cross between a county fair and a yard sale. Someone said it was the equivalent of a Walmart shopping spree for people like Maderwa. There was the guy on the bullhorn, demonstrations how to use a mosquito net, and plenty of women chattering away about who was going after what. When they blew the whistle and the fair started, I was almost trampled by a bunch of women. Maderwa shouldered her way to the dishes. She needed some new cooking pots and she wasn't about to waste time with anything overpriced. Maderwa knows how to bargain. Then she went and bought cloth for that dress, and a basin to wash clothes and the kids in. Then it was on to the mattresses. She's hardly been able to sleep at night. She and her husband have been sleeping on a stick bed covered in rags for months. They almost forgot Dad. He needed new pants. Size wasn't really important, and neither was style. They finally settled on a nice purple pair. When she got home, she tried out her new basin. She loved it. It was better than the banana leaf and oil jug she used to bathe the kids on. Maderwa has what she needs now. She can rest a little easier. Food is still going to be a problem. So is medicine for her sick husband. But at least she's got the basics. Unlike a lot of people, Maderwa doesn't need much. The eight items she bought with $75 worth of vouchers is basically all she and her husband own. But she forgot something. She didn't buy herself a pair of flip-flops. When I asked her why, she smiled at me. That smile that told me I really didn't understand. They weren't really that important, she said. I didn't really need them.